Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I'm starting to build an elegant town hall for the bottom of High Street at the front of my N-gauge layout. I've been inspired by the town hall building in Sowerby Bridge. It's currently empty, and it was a bank before that, and only half of it still exists. But with its massive tower, giant blockwork, and huge two-storey high windows, this will look just right in Chandwell, opposite the equally lovely, but run-down, Earl Chandfield Hotel. The most striking feature of the building is its cylindrical tower, and since I've never made a cylinder from card before, I decided to start this build here, just in case I make a mess. This will be my most ambitious build to date, so join me for part one, building a stone cylinder from card. Using measurements of the real thing's stonework, and guesswork based on Google Street View, I started to draw the building in the free drawing application Inkscape. The real building was a kind of V-shape with the tower at the corner. I decided to just duplicate and flip the right hand side to make the left. An elegant building, just the right size to fit on High Street. I printed the line drawing onto A4 sticky label and then stuck this to an empty cereal packet. It fits just nicely and I think the building will really suit the location. Let's see if we can make this tower though. I printed some circles and a wall element to a label, and then stuck this to half millimetre card. I chose the thin card as it will be easier to cut the circles and easier to bend the card into the cylinder shape. I added 40 guidelines across the two wall segments, and each one was gently scored, 80 in total. I hope that this will allow me to bend the card into a smooth cylinder. Each of the circles was cut next. This took quite a while. I pondered whether I would have been better using the inner tube from a toilet roll, but I decided that I prefer the control of choosing my own dimensions by doing it this way. It took almost 8 minutes to cut out the 9 circles, and then another couple for the walls. I want more than just half a millimetre to add my glue to, so I will stack the circles. I cut a hole for the elegant window. I'm not sure if I will need it, but it's there if so. Oh dear, this doesn't look too smoothly curved, does it? I used PVA to stack the circles, and then tried to introduce a gentle curve to the wall using my fingers. I tried to fold each score mark through the sticky label and into the card. The big hole for the window was going to cause me problems, I could already tell. I decided to use super glue to fix the wall to the circles. This should give an instant bond and help keep the shape of the cylinder. So I added three lines of glue to the wall and then dropped the three circles into the glue and pressed them into place. I then gently rolled the wall around the circles, doing my best to keep a tight fit. That's worked quite well, although it's clearly lots of flat surfaces, rather than a smooth surface. I thought that the walls should be one millimetre thick rather than a half, so I covered the surface with PVA and then added an outer layer around the first. I held this in place with elastic bands. I tried to keep them on top of the support circles so as not to squash the card. I unwrapped the tower the next day. It was immediately obvious that it was a complete mess. The card had squashed in, the large window opening was bored inwards, and the seam at the back, although it will be invisible, was clearly very, very wrong. The whole thing looked lumpy, grooved and messy. There wasn't a single straight bit of wall. It was time to try again. So here we go again. Same circles, but only one wall this time. I increased the number of score lines from 40 to 50, so they are now a lot closer together. To introduce the curve this time, I held my ruler over the wall and deliberately and slowly introduced a full fold into each score line. This took ages, but it was immediately obvious that this one was going to be a lot better. A test fit of the circle showed that the wall needed to be trimmed a little. I made four circles instead of three this time. I've kept an internal gap in case I need to open out the hole for the window, but for now I've made the wall all in one piece. I used the same technique with super glue to attach the circles to the wall. Whoops! This is much, much better. Compared to my lumpy first attempt, this one looks like it is a genuine smooth cylinder. I'm happy with this. I printed the stonework texture onto matte photo paper. 
dressed stone at the upper and simple dark lines lower down. I also printed strips of stone underneath and you'll see why in a minute. Only the front portion of the tower will be visible, so this texture will go about halfway around, like this. I used PVA glue on the back of the texture and gently smoothed it onto the cylinder. Next, I cut out the first of the stone strips. It's only 3mm wide, it's quite delicate. I used watercolour paint to remove the white top and bottom edges of the paper. I did this from behind to avoid getting any paint on the printed surface. I then applied a thin bead of PVA along the bottom of the tower and gently dropped the stone strip into place. I repeated this another nine times. It took a while but I eventually added the last line of glue and the last strip of paper. Although I've done it in 10 strips instead of 11, I think this is a close enough representation of the bottom part of Sowerby Bridge Tower. So in place, the tower's base looks like it will work nicely. It's nice and smooth, not lumpy and looks like a genuine cylinder. The tower is the most difficult part, so I need to be sure I can get it right before moving on to the rest of the building. I really, really can't wait to see this one develop. It's a beautiful building, but it will have plenty of Chandwell twists along the way. Spoilers, it's not going to the town hall any longer. If you enjoyed this build and want to follow along with the complete town hall, you can click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get a notification when the next episode is published. It takes me a lot of effort to make these videos, so every time you subscribe, it helps you convince me to carry on. Thank you so much if you have already subscribed. Here's a look at how I started my last mega build, the Royal Scott Hotel. Come back next week and see how I get on with this elegant window. So until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.